Where were we? I don't know. I think I was talking about that. Oh, downloadable content. You have to pay for. Yeah. Like Railworks. Was it called Train Simulator? Is it called Train Simulator now? Was it originally called Train Simulator and now it's called Railworks? Or was it originally called Railworks and now it's called Train Simulator? I cannot remember. But I do know it's basically a train set yeah. kind of thing. That you buy per... You buy bits per, for... Per county or per state, I think. You can buy it? different lines and different trains and different locomotives <clears throat> and different yeah. rolling stock cars, whatever. No, give me my free mods, please. All that kind of stuff. And if you download all of it, I think I read somewhere it cost you like $4,000 or something. Like all of it. I mean, it's easier to dust than to train set. No, this is true. You're never going to lose a piece to the cat or... No. No. Mm. Yeah, and you're never... But uh, you're ne also, yeah, but also you're never going to get Gromit. You're not. Chasing a penguin round and round. You're not going to get Ant-Man on there either. Laying track as he goes. That was good. In front of his... That was utterly, utterly beautiful. That was brilliant, yeah. Um, yeah, that was weird, that bit on Ant-Man. Yeah, the... Ant-Man train, train fight. Oh, it cause... just goes like clonk. Off. Yeah. Oh, that made me laugh so hard. <sighs> yeah. So, so very hard. A sudden jarring <clears throat> change in scale. Ow. Yes. But that was, you know, the, the pun, pun or play on words. It was. The very point yes. and purpose of the exercise. Which just made it funnier. Anyway, moving on. Okay. Let's do that. What are we going to talk about today? Well, today, lovely listeners, for those eagle-eared among you, see what I did there. Eagle-eared. Eagles don't have ears. Okay, fine. I mean, it they was, have it. It was a pun or pun or play on words on eagle-eyed. Oh, I'm sorry. A sharp listener rather than a sharp viewer. I see. And I should clarify, of course, eagles have... Ears, ears, as in the ability to hear. Yes. But they don't have sticky out. They don't have sticky out ears. They don't have sticky out. Well, no, because they do wind resistance with sticky out ears. Flaps. Like we do. <laughs> <laughs> this is going all wrong. Again. I'm just... I mean, everybody else is flap, don't they? It's not just mine. <laughs> I don't think mine. I've never tried to flap mine. Okay, conversation in front of the time. Eagle-eared listeners. For eagle-eared listeners, thank you. <laughs> You'll have noticed we have moved the virtual campfire to the shoreline. Yes. And if you listen, you can hear waves, and it's kind of chilly out. We're going to get a bit closer to them later in the episode. Swoosh. Swoosh. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just doing, I'm just doing some manually in case something goes wrong, and. It doesn't record properly, so it's like swoosh. Do you want me to do like seagulls as well? You can do seagulls. Can Go like, do ah, seagulls. Ah, 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 or something like that. Or is that seals? One or the other. I'm One not of those sure. those things that's near the seashore, so it's fine. Ocean going what's it's anyway. <coughs> Ocean going what's it's. Yeah. I mean, they get a bit soggy, but. That's what I was thinking. It's not a good look for them. Swoosh. Swoosh. I can't do both at once, obviously. <laughs> no, because then you'd get swah. <laughs> swah. I don't even know how, where I'd start, not, to be honest. Yeah, it's not good. So, lovely listeners, before we go into today's episode, Swish. we probably ought to welcome you to episode 76 of Frithcast. <laughs> Music goes here. Well, I should have gone swoosh. <laughs> no, I don't enough swoosh. No, you haven't. There's never enough swoosh. Is there not? Uh -uh. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to put the music over this bit, or shall we just talk through it? Well, we generally just talk. We've talked through it before. It'll we be have. Fine. It's true. Okay. So music bit goes here. Uh, music stops. Right yeah. Okay. 
Lovely listeners, we'll introduce ourselves before we start. I'm Suzanne Martin and I'm a heathen with a head full of random stuff. And I'm Kate and I'm um, not a heathen. I just live here. Okay. You may have also noticed, for those eagle-eared among you, that I have a cold. Eagle-eared? eagle Shut up! Well, you have a cold. This I is have why... a cold. <laughs> Just leave me alone. Oh, she's suffering. She's suffering something terrible. Get the in jeans in cold. Yes. Is what it is. Yeah. No, we need, we need to be doing to be doing the sympathy. And I'm, and if I I sound like I'm 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 sort laughing. of laughing. I'm not laughing. <laughs> I'm not actually laughing because I know I know in a couple of days that'll be me. Quite possibly. I like to share these things. You certainly do. Anyway. Lovely listeners, welcome to episode 76 of Frithcast. We are down by the shoreline for a very important reason. We are going to look at one of the sea gods, Njord, Mm -hmm. a little bit. And we're also going to look at short meditations. So we looked at short mantra and prayer a little while ago. Yeah. So this episode is, again, it's something that you can use to create that little bit of spiritual connection every day. Mm -hmm. So meditation for me comes in two forms. There's meditation where you just sit and you are. So you may count breaths. You may relax. You may have a little track of trippy music that you just want to put on and have a moment of quiet in that space. Mindfulness. Mindfulness. The second type of meditation, of which this is one, is what they call a guided meditation. Okay. So it's where you generally have somebody's voice, or you have words that you can record yourself to listen back to, Mm -hmm. and create that sense of peace and place. And it's called a guided meditation, but it's kind of akin to using your imagination. Mm. So you imagine yourself in another place. And you may take a walk in that place. You may just sit in that place and enjoy that space for what it is. And then you may have what they call like the recall or the coming away from that place. Yeah. So in both cases, what I tend to say to people is just have short ones to start with. Just have ones that are a minute long or two minutes or three minutes and then build them up to five minutes till you get to sort of maybe 20, 25 minutes, half an hour in a day, half an hour every couple of days, half an hour on a Friday night when you just want to stop the week. Yeah. And you just need everything just to quit for a minute. (laughs) Yeah. For me, I can use those meditations to reaffirm my faith. I can use them to get, maybe not get closer to some of the gods because the meditations I write don't actually have the gods in them that they are a space in which those gods could exist if they wanted. Okay. So I tend to describe the locales, areas, Mm. and you go through that particular area. And it's often an environment that is associated with that god. Okay. So for Iduna, maybe a meditation walking through an orchard, Mm. an apple orchard. For Frigga, maybe it's walking along a wide, sandy path on the banks of a marsh in the middle of a summer day, so that you're going to her hall in the reeds. Yeah. Maybe for Tia, you're walking through a clearing or a forest to a blacksmith's, and you can hear the sounds of that. Mm. So it's kind of going to environments that evoke that deity for me yeah and it may be that meditation is your thing it may be something you use already it may be something that you want to try in your practice it may be that when you try it you think hey yeah i really quite get on with this this is kind of groovy it may be it's like maybe not right now it might be that you want to sit and do a guided visualization guided meditation before you go into ritual space Hmm. it may be that you want to build that sense of sacred connection inside yourself before you go into official prayer yeah before you as part of your ritual preparation it to might be that you try it and it's not your thing to focus focus you in the in the in the in that kind of headspace yeah yeah it might be that you want 5 minutes 
at lunchtime to go and sit quietly somewhere and do maybe a visualization, maybe a couple of minutes of meditation and a short prayer before you carry on in your day. Yeah. It may be that you're in the middle of a night shift. It may be that on your way home from driving, please don't meditate while driving. No. It's not going to be a good it's, thing. It's not a great combination. You want not you hugely. kind of want the alertness if if you can. Yeah, you want the alertness going into it. And some people find meditation can be a very relaxing way to start a day. Mm. So before maybe before the kids get up, maybe before other people around you get up, you can just have a couple of minutes to yourself. Yeah. Just to create that connection. And for me it's been very useful in helping develop connections especially with some of the gods and goddesses that maybe aren't so familiar with me at the moment mm. so they're not as familiar to me there are certain ones that I will instinctually connect with Yeah. other ones I have to work at that connection mm. so meditation uh, guided visualizations, guided meditations are a way that I can help strengthen that connection, that positive connection of a place of peace yeah. and a sense of purpose and a sense of being. So, lovely listeners, we've moved the virtual campfire because it's virtual, it moves. Yay! It can go from Colorado to Uzbekistan and everywhere else. Because it's a virtual campfire. It, it, it is. It's, it on, it's on little casters. It's on little casters. It's, it's on little caster it wheels. It's on little, like, little blue guys with red hair that just pick it up and move it backwards. Well, who do you think pushes it along on the casters? I know. It's so cool. <laughs> they get paid in tobacco and ginger biscuits. It's great. And they're happy. They're very, very happy. So... So the thing with the virtual campfire is that it moves. So yeah. we've come down to the shoreline today to do a it's, meditation to Njord. It's got little skis if we want to take it like somewhere somewhere snowy. Yeah. It has little skis we can fit over the casters. It does. It's little quite good. Fire dish and a little kind of mittens we can put on. Am I taking this too far? Can you go too far with mittens? No. Generally. No, well, there you um, go then. Should be okay with mittens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Njord, if he's a god that you don't maybe work with so much or he's not familiar to you, he's the father of Frey and Freya. I, did I know that? Possibly. I don't feel like I knew that. Okay, so right in the beginning, the Aesir Vanya war, mm. him and his son and his daughter are three of the hostages that are exchanged at the beginning. They go and live in... Because they are Vanir. Because they are Vanir. Nature gods. Nature gods. Okay. So he's primarily to do with the sea, but he's not the deeps. He's the shallow coastal waters where the fish... That is Ran. Ran is the deeps. Yes. Yes. Also, Ran is now the new name for Epsilon Eridani. It's easier to spell. The star... Yeah. yeah. Nice. Offici officially, properly, formal, Ron. formally named Ron. Nice. Well, there you go. Have to figure out how far that is off Darcy's eyes. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yes, Njord is the father to Frey and Frey. Okay. He is. He holds dominion over the coastal waters. He has aspects that look after. The fishermen, fishing industries, shallow waters. And if, like us, you live in the middle of a landlocked mm? place, you might not get to go see his domain very often. Sadly. Sadly. So that's why we brought the virtual campfire to the shoreline for this evening. Mm. He's also the god that marries Skadi. Can the mountains love the sea? Can the mountains love the sea? So his home is on the cliff tops with the seabirds and the fishermen that go out and in every day. His feet are the cleanestest of feet of all the gods. And very attractive. Very attractive, very clean, mm. very neat feet. Mm. So one of the other 
maybe slightly more obscure meditations to Njord where you can dedicate time is to give your feet some TLC. Wow. I know, right? Yeah, that would never have occurred to me. So yeah, hot water, exfoliate the skin, trim your nails down. Mm. Give your feet a little bit of TLC and make them fit for a snow goddess. Yeah, I like that. Yeah? I like that. So we're going to talk a little bit about Njord. And now for me, he's most connected on beaches. Mm. That little strip of place where water meets land and can be one or either or both at any given time. Yep. That liminal space. Yeah, I've walked into patches of sand like that. <laughs> yeah. So that liminal space where the sky and the sea and the earth all come together in one little thin strip of coast. That, to me, is where Njord is, in my mind, is strongest. Mm. So in the middle of where we are, which is right in the middle of England, is not somewhere that I can connect to very easily. No, me neither. Uh, I oh, can't I'm... go and visit it every Sorry. day. I can't go and visit the coast every day. Mm. I can't hear the waves for myself. So I might choose to use a guided meditation as part of sacred time or dedication to Njord. Yeah. So, lovely listeners, we'd like to invite you on a short guided meditation to Njord. And I'm going to ask you just to sit comfortably and settle. a big deep breath in and let it out and just listen to the sound of the waves I would like you to imagine yourself at the top of a beach path In front of you, the path winds its way through the beach and the shoreline stretches out to each side. The wide sky is above. You can hear the seabirds calling. Smell the salt in the air. Hear the gentle rush of waves on the shore. Move down the path, feeling the sea breezes play around. the waters sparkle ahead of you. Take as long as you want going down the path. Sit for a while on the shore if you choose.
already. Head back up the path. Know that you can come back here as often as you like. Choose to take a deep breath in and let it out. Have that moment of tides with you. The give and the take, the pull and the push, the waves of your life. See them clearly. Lovely listeners, we hope you've enjoyed a virtual campfire moving down to the shoreline for an episode. Out of the forest, down to the shore. So I've got to wake up now. Yeah, it does. Um, oh. If you would like to find us online, let us know how you get on. You can find me, I'm Suzanne Martin. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Twitter at Geetha in Jeans. And if you should want to find me for some reason best known to yourself, I'm on Facebook as Kate Colvin and I have a terrible, terrible blog thing at glassrain.net. So lovely listeners, we'll leave you just having a quiet moment down by the shoreline and we'll see you next time for episode 77. Bye. See you then. Bye-bye.